All right. Well, good morning. My name's Rick. I, I don't know if I introduced myself earlier. Rick Flynn, I'm the pastor here. I want to welcome you guys all to church, all of you guys online that just joined us and the millions around the world. Just kidding. There's like 12 people on there. But <laughs> no, it's good to see you guys. If you guys would do me a favor, if you are online, we are trying to kind of, you know, pay attention to that. So if, if any of you decide you're sick and stay home and skip church, or, I mean, watch online, um, you, if you would check in and actually put your name on there and let us know you're there, we'd love to just kind of keep track of who's watching online too. It's great. I uh, want to welcome you, and I want to, I don't know, I try to, they had said that, uh, who is that earlier this morning said I feel very comfortable up here, right? I don't, not really. I'm nervous all the time when I walk up here. I wanted you to know that, but I do want you to know that that this is a safe place, right? I want you to be yourself here, and I, I try to do that, uh, which works some days. Some days it doesn't work really well, but I want you to just relax and, and feel like this is a place that we come to experience Christ. A little bit later, we're going to get to do communion together, and that, that's one of my favorite times of the month when we actually come and do communion together as one big family, and it's, it's another opportunity for us to experience Christ another wow moment, which we'll get into. But I want, this is a safe place. I want you to relax and open up to what God may be wanting to tell you today. Some of you, this is your first time here, and I appreciate you coming, but who knows what you'll experience. But my hope is that maybe by experiencing God today, maybe today is the very first time you really do experience Him and the Holy Spirit in a whole new way. And maybe, just maybe, it's like an old friend coming to give you a hug. And if you've lived a life like that, that's amazing to be able to walk with God in that way. And that's what I just truly hope that this is what we get out of today. My prayer is that you will be drawn closer to him. And my prayer is that because of this experience with Christ this morning, that maybe, just maybe, we will be able to take the love of Christ out into this world and change the stuff that is going on. Be the light of Christ in the community. Be there for those who are struggling. Be there for those who don't know Christ. Because that's what it's all about. Why else would we come here on Sunday morning? Obviously, it's not how we do announcements. Obviously, it's not how, you know, the things that we do. It's about experiencing God so that we can take what we've learned, make him a priority in our lives that we talked about at men's group that most of you missed. I'm sorry, just a little shameless plug for men's group. <laughs> I was 30 minutes late. I'll just throw that out there. Sorry. If someone hadn't texted me, uh, I would have been late too. Uh, but we take what we learn and make God a priority, and we go out into the world and make a difference, and we lead people to an act of faith in Jesus. That's what it's all about. And once again, I have no idea where I'm out of my notes because none of that was in there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Some of that was. Today, we are in the final part of our, our three-part series of how do we pray, right? In the first week, we looked at, 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 at coming to God in prayer and asking Him for help. Now, all of this has been based off of Anne Lamott's book about prayer, and, and if you've missed some parts of this series, you can go to sp.church uh, slash messages and, and find us online. They'll have our messages on there for you. And like I said, the first week was asking about help. The second week uh, was about, um, I'm sorry, asking for, I'm getting off on of my notes. The first week was about help and how we need to recognize that we need to go to God for help, Right? We are not perfect, and first and foremost, we are not God, right? He is in control, and when we need help, we're going to go to, go to the ultimate for that. And in the second week, we learned about how to say thanks. How do we give thanks to God for all the things that he has given us? And this book is about that, and it's just a kind of a way to pray. First, we give and go to God for help, and we give thanks to God. Now, today, we're going to talk about the last part of the book, which is the wow factor. I've heard that say, said as, in a way of like, count your blessings, right? And how has God blessed you? I think about the wow factor, and I didn't put a lot of thought in, into, you know, the wow aspect of it until I started reading this book and, and looking at this. But one of the things that the writer tells us, or the author, she says this, wow means we are not dulled to wonder. 
Wow means we're not dulled to wonder, meaning that these exciting things, these amazing, miraculous things happen in our life, and we see the sunrise, and we see the sun set, and we see the oceans move, and, and we see the miracle and the amazing things that God has created, and we're just like, well, it's another sunset. That's being dulled to the wonder. We click into being fully present when we're stunned into that gasp by the sight of a birth or images of the World Trade Center falling. Wow is about having one's mind blown by the mesmerizing or the miraculous. When we are stunned to the place beyond words, when an aspect of life takes us away from being about chipping away at something until it's down to a, a manageable size, whether that be good or bad, we have a tendency to minimize things so that we and our tiny little human brains can handle it. And then we file it away nicely when all we can say in response is, wow. Take time to see the wow in our world. Take time to see the wow in each other. Wow moments are different for every single one of us. And they are. And when I think about being stunned into a place without words, I think of watching the new Top Gun movie, Maverick. And just be, I was sitting in my seat, weaving and bobbing with him as he flew the plane, right? And I was like, wow, this is amazing to be. And, and if I ever meet Tom Cruise, I'm going to punch him in the nose. Because he didn't tell me I had to go to college first when I joined the Navy to be a pilot. I thought I was just going to, I'm going to be a pilot. Come on in, son. That's not how it worked. <laughs> now, I'm kind of teasing about the movie. It is a good movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Go see the first one first. But... When I really think about wow, I think about the wow in nature. I mentioned the sun and the stars and stuff like that, but we went on a, I got a, actually an opportunity to go with my wife Kathy to uh, Canada, Nicaragua, or Nicaragua, Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm mixing, mixing it up. This is Niagara Falls, read. But I went to Niagara Falls, and I think he's going to show you some pictures of it, and that's just pictures with my iPhone. And you just, even with my limited ability with my phone, you can just see the beauty of that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I think there's some nighttime photos of it too. Now, when I think about nature, and, and I like to go out on hikes and, and bikes and biking and riding and, and walking, you know, down these trails that we have, and I like to go down to uh, Arkansas and walk in the woods and the trails that they have down there, and you just, you see the beauty in a flower. There's that poem about a tree, right? I don't know it all, but I think about that and that God created these things. They have a functionality, right? The, 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 the plants and photosynthesis and all that stuff, right? And there's some biology. That's my biology degree right there. That's all I remember. But, um, but there's, a, there's a functionality to it. But then how he creates these things, there's a beauty to this world that sometimes we take for granted. We just, oh, it's another flower. Oh, my wife likes roses. No, she doesn't. She likes carnations. Give her the carnations, not the roses, right? You got to remember these things, but it's like you see the beauty and creation that God creates for us, and those are wow moments, and I'm in awe thinking about these things. You know, and we could spend all kinds of time at the things that wow me, and, and I could just show you a whole photo slides of, of pictures of things that I've taken pictures of and, and my grandkids and stuff like that. Some of you may or may not care about that, but the reason I bring that up is because the wow is different for all of, all of you. Some of you saw Niagara Falls and went, yeah, big waterfall, right? And they don't shut it off at night, by the way. Our hotel was right on the water, and you can hear it all night long. It's like, right? There was a wow there. <laughs> wow, I had no idea it was that loud, right? <laughs> but I want to spend some time on why is wow important? Why is wow essential to our journey, to our faith walk? The Bible is full of wow moments, and it's hard to choose which one. As I say that, and I say the Bible has wow moments, some of you, something popped into your head, the parting of the Red Sea, or, or this, or that, right? The feeding of the 5,000. But today, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And before I get too deep into that, I want to remind you that um, don't just take my word for it. 
I know I say this a lot, that, that I still feel like I'm pretty new, uh, but I'm 52, I'll just tell you guys that, but in my head and spiritually speaking, I think I'm about 18 up here, okay, just so you know, <laughs> so I'm still learning and I'm studying and, and I expect you guys to be doing the same thing, because sometimes I'll say something up here that may, might make you kind of think, so write that stuff down, dig into God's word and see what he has to say to you. Now, also, we printed uh, study, study guides for each, each of the sermon, sermons, this, this series, and they're out there. Um, grab one of those. There are ways for you to, to read through them in your own Bible study. There are ways for you to get together with your friends and your life groups and study together so that we're all studying the same, t- the same things. So as we get into the scripture, I want to give you a little back, back story. See that previously in this chapter, Jesus had just heard about the beheading of one of his friends, John the Baptist. He's also exhausted from healing and feeding people and healing the sick, and he had just fed 5,000 people with just, you know, uh, five loaves of bread and two fish, and he needs some time to to rest and, and reconnect with God. That's what I love about when you read about Jesus. He's not this superhero that can do everything all the time, all the time, right? And he is God, and he is fully capable of those things, but he remembers where his strength comes from. Even Jesus, he goes back to God to commune with him, to pray with him, to study with him, to hear from him. So as we get ready to read, this is Immediately what happens after that, he had dismissed the disciples after they had fed him. And they said, you go, go on ahead, get in the boat, go across the water. And immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. So he spent the, the rest of the day praying, and later that night he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. And this boat was out there, and it was getting just hammered by waves, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them. He was walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. They, were, they saw someone walking to them on the water, and it freaked them out, and they were scared. But immediately, Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. He encourages them. He comforts them in their fear. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, and this is one of my favorite parts. I love this about Peter. Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water. Peter. He's not Jesus, right? He gets out and he walks on the water and he comes towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And he says this, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. They just experienced a a, a miraculous thing, a miracle. Jesus walked on the water, and better yet, this guy Peter gets out of the boat, and he walks on water too. And they are wowed in that moment, and their only response to that wow is they worshipped him, saying, you are truly the Son of God. Could you imagine that? Would that freak you out if I just all of a sudden started walking and levitating out here? Boy, that fell off. They, that's why they say don't do that, because all you guys are thinking about that moment is, oh, he's going to fall, right? <laughs> and I get yelled at because I went in the dark. <laughs> but imagine that wow moment of seeing Peter walk across the water, seeing Jesus come to them. And they experienced it, and they had the proper response, right? They worshiped him. Now, this passage is a wow to me because I think I'm a little bit like Peter. And I have a tendency to to take my eyes off of Jesus and focus on the storm sometimes. And I believe that Peter loved Jesus with all his heart and he wanted to follow Jesus so much so that he even stepped out of the boat. But then when he got out there and he's walking on the water and he kept his eyes on Jesus, focused on him and and the the true... um, truest sense of who we are to worship and who we are to be like, but then he heard the wind and the distractions of the world, and he began to sink, and he panicked. But 
Jesus saved him, pulled him back, put him in the boat. Because Jesus will, will save us no matter what, no matter if we lose sight of him, no matter if we turn our back on him, Jesus will save us. So Jesus goes on from there and he continued to perform miracles and he taught every day, healing people and spending time with the disciples. And he continued to wow them over and over and over, a miracle here and a miracle there, feeding more people, uh, um, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf. He's doing all of these amazing things, but Jesus also understood that he had a limited amount of time with these disciples. So he decides to start preparing them and telling them about what's coming. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in, in this, uh, when we do communion. But he talks to them about the fact that he's going to be arrested. He talks to them about the fact that, that they are going to crucify him all the way up into death. They're going to kill him. But he doesn't end there. He tells them, but I'm going to come back. I'm going to rise again. And he told them this because he knew that his followers would feel orphaned after that. And we talked about that on Monday, Thursday. Remember when we did the painting and we did all that stuff and we talked about how they all deserted him when they come to get him in the woods? How they all deserted him when he died on the cross? Almost all. But he reassured them saying this, all of this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. That's in John chapter 14. So Jesus was telling his followers that he wasn't going to be with them forever. He was telling his followers that, that I am not going to be in this human form forever, but after I was gone, I'm going to send someone to help you. I'm going to send a guide to help you. And the day that that happened, when the Holy Spirit descended upon the uh, disciples, I have to sit down a minute, I don't know why my hip's hurting, I'm getting old. When the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples, that's the day of Pentecost. You know what today is? The day of Pentecost. The day we celebrate it. What happened on that day is the Holy Spirit descended upon them and they were filled, filled with the Holy Spirit and they felt the power of God in them. And they went out and they spoke to crowds and these crowds were in town and they were from different areas and they spoke different languages, but hey, they all heard their language spoken when the disciples were up there. They were freaking out. Even so They said, oh my gosh, it's, it's noon. Are these guys babbling? Are they drunk? What is going on with these people? But no, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And to me, to be in that presence of the Holy Spirit filled in that way is a wow moment. It's something to be celebrated. It's the ultimate moment and it changes everything. Because without that moment, these disciples would have eventually gave up and went away, I believe. But they didn't. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and it changes everything. Through Jesus Christ, His Spirit is available to all of us, even us today. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't matter if you're a brand new believer, like I mentioned in, in the opening when I was welcoming everybody. It doesn't matter if you've been a follower of Christ your entire life, because I know just as well as you guys do, some days I don't feel very close to God. And some days I wonder if God is even listening. But then there are other days when I feel like, oh my gosh, that had to be God, right? That had to be God. Jesus is here to meet you right where you're at. You know what's great and amazing I think about Jesus is he is patient, so patient. How many times have I turned my back on God? How many times have I decided I want to do it my way? And God's up there going, okay, here we go again. It's okay. He'll get through it. He'll get through it, right? There are some people who, who can be wowed by God, right? Hear that calling on their life, and then that's it. They're good. They just spend the rest of their life following God. Being a part of it, and sure, they have their ups and downs, and they have mistakes in this, but most of the time you go to them, and they're so full of the Spirit, and they just, they just have it, and they're amazing, and you're like, I just want to be around that person. They're amazing. I always notice, and I feel God when I'm with them. 
right? And then they hear what they need to hear, and they don't really need any further encouragement. It's like God just touched them in an amazing, miraculous way, right? And we're wowed by their faith, and we're wowed by their genuine love of Christ. But most of us are not wired that way. We can get excited by a real motivational speaker, right? We can go to camps and conferences. I don't know how many I've been to with the kids and the youth. And we're all fired up and, woo, yeah, go Jesus. We love Jesus. Yes, we do. How about you, right? And they just scream. You're supposed to say, yes, we do. you're supposed to come back with it, right? And you get excited about it. And, and it's these hills and valleys. And sometimes I think maybe, it's maybe I'm a little high maintenance when it comes to my faith. You know, I am a firm believer in Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. I, I totally 100% believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for my sins. I don't know about your guys' sin, but he took care of mine, right? No, I'm kidding. He's here for all of us. But that's what he came for. And I believe that with all my heart, but I'm not always sure I have what it takes to follow his lead because he's going to call you outside of your comfort zone. I did it to Jeremy and Crystal and Hank this morning. I'm calling them out of their comfort zone so that, that God can use them also. And I call all of you from time to time out of your comfort zone so that you can be stretched, so that you can be used by God. It happens every Friday on the mowers out here. Just, I'm just kidding. Golly. <laughs> So I'm not only sure that I can follow where God leads, but I'm like Peter because I always have a plan. I always have an idea of what we want to do and what we should do, but that's the problem. It's my idea. It's my plan. And my plans and my ideas don't always work, right? I think I've told you this joke before, just tell God your plans if you want to make him laugh. And sometimes I have a, a tendency maybe to doubt my call to ministry. There's many days that I've struggled with the, the feeling of, of being unworthy for the tasks ahead. But there's that still, small, quiet voice in my head that reminds me that I am God's beloved. For God so loved me that he sent his one and only son so that I could have eternal life. Right? You ever done that? Change the the words in the Bible to, to make it where God is talking directly, directly to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He tells me to step out of the boat, not because I'm some kind of miracle, talented water walker, right? But because Jesus won't let me sink. And I truly believe that if, if, if it would bring glory and honor to God that for me to step off this stage and not break my nose, it would happen. I don't think he's really calling me to do that right this moment, right? But in that moment, Peter stepped out of the boat and he walked on water, and that helped bring glory and honor to God when the people in the boat, what did they end up doing? They praised God in that wow moment. I've been on this hill I don't know if you've been here a lot, but you come up here on this hill and the wind blows. And I've been on top of this hill for 16 years. I've seen many ups and downs when it comes to this church. I've watched it struggle with infighting against them, ourselves with over so, much, so many different things that really have no eternal difference in our lives or in our salvation when it comes to Jesus. And I've seen this church struggle, and I've seen this church destroyed by a tornado, and I've seen this church destroyed by a fire. And like I said, I stood out there on that dirt road, and I watched this church burn to the ground. And there are times over the last 16 years that I have really, truly considered, maybe this is not the church for me and my family. And there were times, especially after the fire, and going through the process of combining churches with St. Paul's that I really considered leaving. Those were a lot of wow moments that I have experienced over the last 16 years, and not all of them were good. I could have definitely, I could definitely see where the dev devastation of a tornado or a fire can have all sorts of wow moments. But for me, 
what happened after the tornado, what happened after the fire, those are the things that wowed me. After the tornado, this church rebuilt, had a big, beautiful building, and even while I was building, they had trailers moved in, and they continued to have church. They continued to worship God through the struggle. And then after the fire, nothing here but a slab. We continued to worship. We went to the school and we worshiped. We went to the funeral home and worshiped, right? And I say that because that, that, I mean, our church was dying. And we spent several months in a funeral home. And then we moved to another building on Main Street, which we still own. We actually have been able to to bless and wow another congregation by, by renting that building to them so that they can have a new building to worship in the Nazarene Church. I don't know if you guys know that or not. We are renting that building to them. So we are having an impact in the kingdom in an entirely different denomination. That's a wow thing. But some of the wows and the awesomeness that I've seen come from the people who stayed and wanted to be a part of something much bigger, wanted to be a part of something that was going to make a huge difference. It's made a difference in my life, and it's made a difference in the community, I believe. It's made a difference in the life of this church. They came together in the midst of this terrible tragedy and built something beautiful. Now, you may see a ribbon cutting going on, but I'm not talking about the building that's behind all those smiling faces. You all came together with a few people from the Joplin campus, and you built a church. And again, I'm not talking about this building. You all come together to be the church. And I've seen it over and over and over in your willingness to serve, to serve inside the church, outside the church. I've seen it in your generosity. I've seen it in the way that you love each other and in the way that you love this community. And that is just amazing. That is my wow moment. The day after the fire, that changed me. But watching you all come together to do what you did, you wowed me. It's amazing that we are still here. The struggles that this church has gone through and the things that we've done, and all that tells me is that God has a plan for this church. He is not done with us yet. You see, it reminds me every day that God can bring good and grace and love out of the most horrific of circumstances. Think about that. It was destroyed by a tornado, destroyed by a fire, and we're still here. And I wasn't sure what would all come from that season of life, and for my life and in the church's life, but I believe that with God's help, we could get through it all. And most definitely we did. We are still here, and we are still going. But I want to challenge you that God is calling us for much, much more. And now it is time for us to get busy. There was a point not too long ago that I was talking to a, one of our former worship leaders, and, and he said, man, we're getting really good at doing church. Yeah, we have a building. Yeah, we can sing. Yeah, we can come and worship. But it's time for us to be the church. And I can't do it by myself. It's all of us together that are going to have to be the church. I'll always be grateful for that crazy time in my life and the life in this church, and, and I've made friends with people and, and, and that I would probably would have never have met. And I've, it's been a great honor for, for me to be able to walk through some of the best of times and some of the worst of times in your guys' lives as your pastor. And those were times that I will always remember and I'll always cherish. And we've seen some tragedies since the fire. There's been natural disasters. There's been a pandemic. There's been violence and and war and then even in our schools and in Tulsa and the things that are going on. But in in, uh, Lamont's book, she says this, although it is difficult and many times we want to turn away, we keep our heart open. Traumas beat you down, but against all odds, something emerges from the wreckage in our hearts. So we can bear witness. We can do our part to do the work that is needed. When we do this, love falls to earth, rises from the ground, pulls around the afflicted. Love pulls people back to their feet. Bodies and souls are fed. Bones and lives heal. New blades of grass grow from the charred soil. 
and the sun rises. Literally, this place was charred to the ground and new blades of grass are growing. And I see them right here. I see them online. Gorgeous and amazing things can happen in our lives when we pay attention. Don't focus on the bad. Yes, the bad things are the things that happen to us that shape us and form us and who we become and who we are, but we need to be able to be wowed by, by God. But if we get to the point where we begin to see things, well, and we, we kind of say, well, I pretty much expected that to happen. Yeah, I knew the Democrats would do that. Yeah, I knew the Republicans would do that. Yeah. I knew it. The gas prices are going to go up. Yeah. We just kind of get numb and jaded to what's going on in our world. Or if you're like me, you get too busy to look around and see the wonder around you. And you need to ask God for help. And then <laughs> there have been so many times when I'm busy working on my own projects or I'm working to get God and you to do what I want you to do, right? <laughs> Where I want my plans to take effect. But then I get stuck. And then if we get stuck, I think we're kind of like mushrooms living in the dark, right? There's a, a, vi or a dirty joke there that I'm not going to really go into, but ask me later about what a mushroom is in the military. But I don't mind this little hole sometimes because it's a good place for me to just be nice and warm and dry. And it's really fine because nothing new can get in. I just keep on keeping on. That's kind of a slow death, a slow fade into nothingness. And I know that new can be scary. I know that each time we attempt something new, it's, it's hard, and, and I'm afraid, but, but God is faithful. And he keeps encouraging me out onto that water. He keeps encouraging you to step out onto that water. And even though he tells us and he calls us to do these things, and my head and my hands are shaking in fear, you may not realize it, though, but you are in the midst of witnessing the next wow moment. You see, I could very easily mushroom myself into this pattern of just doing what I need to do. Keep doing it. Keep doing church. Let's just keep doing church. They'll come. Keep doing church. But we can keep doing our church right into bankruptcy. And we can keep doing church right into closing. Now, I've always had the comfort of of being an associate pastor. I have always had the comfort of having uh, Pastor Britton and Pastor Aaron and Pastor Ben and, and, and Pastor Jeff and all these pastors that some of you may know, some of you may not, and I was just their assistant, and I just did what I was told, and, and, and I just kind of did, you know, I, I'm, I'm military man I'm in the background, right? I, I always know how to follow orders, orders and do what I'm told. Even though you may not agree with it or you're uncomfortable with some of these orders, you just do it. And most of my time, my job revolved around taking care of people and the church and the community and occasionally doing some teaching. But over the last couple of years, God has been asking me to consider what's next. What's next? But now I understand with all those nudges and all those what's next, he's preparing me for my next steps, our next steps in ministry. I've been accepted into a graduate level certificate program at the University uh, or the Dakota Wesleyan University. It's an online program for the next year and it's all about practical church leadership. And I tell you how new I am to standing up here and preaching and teaching. I know nothing about the administrative side of a church, okay? How to, to run a church and the business side and the paperwork and all that stuff that goes with it. But someone nominated me for this course. So it's an online program for the next year. I'll be doing that and learning about the administrative side. I had no idea it was coming. I don't even have a clue who nominated me, but I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm also honored and I'm totally wowed in the moment. But I believe that this is the, one of the next steps in the life of this church. God is preparing us for something amazing. C.S. Lewis tells us this, that, that I pray because I can't help myself. I, I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, walking and sleeping. It doesn't change God, it changes me. Knowing that God can change me through prayer makes me less afraid and more grateful, less critical and more trusting. 
So as we wrap up the series, I want to challenge you to take the time to appreciate the awe-inspiring things that you see God doing in your life. And I don't want to freak people out. I'm, I'm not planning on leaving the church. So that I, don't, I don't know if I said that quite clearly enough. I plan on being here the next 25 years, okay, if you'll keep me. But I do know that God has a plan for us in this church, and things are going to be different. Things are going to change. We're going to go, and we're going to make disciples. We're going to love like Jesus in this community, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. God has a mission for this church. And if you truly want to be blessed, ask God for help understanding what it is he's trying to show you. Invite God to speak into your life and prepare you to be wowed. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be wowed by God? Be careful what you ask for. And for today, that is the good news. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So as the band comes up, I'd like to pray for us, if that's okay. Father God, we are wowed by the way you love us. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to show us that we are never truly alone. Change our hearts. Give us the courage to follow you into ministry in any way you wish. Father, we ask, we pray this in your Son's most holy name. Amen.